What's up? It's me, Mystery, and I am designing Super Smash Bros. 6, also known as Super Smash Bros. Duo. But if you're new here, you gotta know that this is a three-part series, this video being part two. I highly recommend going back and watching part one, where I go over all kinds of newcomers and cut characters from Ultimate to build a roster for this Smash 6 that I've been designing. And a big thank you to everyone that watched that video and added to the discussion. The video currently has 500 views, which is really good for my usual stuff, and I think that really shows the quality of it. I'm still learning when it comes to these highly edited videos, but this has definitely helped my motivation in knowing that I can make something actually watchable, and I'm glad you guys enjoyed it, truly. But um, let's, let's get on to the actual topic of this video. Whatever the next Smash game is going to be, it's going to have to innovate. You can't just release Smash Ultimate again, because Smash Ultimate was already very similar to Smash 4, just using similar models and animations and movesets, but that was mainly because bringing back so many characters was already taxing enough on the development team. So in my Smash 6 or Smash Duo, I'm going to put a focus on 2v2 gameplay, including some new moves. To keep things simple, since Smash already is kind of unconventional in the way it controls as is, every time you grab your teammate, you will have an ability to do a team move. This way, you can use the same animations as you would when grabbing an opponent, and it also just removes the need of having to introduce another button to press. For example, if Mario was to grab Luigi and throw him up, it would give Luigi some mobility to chase opponents in the air, and it also would hit any opponents in the way of the throw. Throwing Luigi forward or backwards would be more offensive, to where a forward throw is just a normal missile, and a back throw could be a misfire move, guaranteed, since it takes longer to wind up. While some team moves could even be unique, like doing a down throw does the fireball animation where both Mario and Luigi shoot fireballs, which could be used to add pressure or block another projectile while also having another come through. And besides Team Final Smashes, this is all I would add as far as new gameplay goes, because you don't really need to overhaul Smash, but it'd just be nice to have something new to play around with. Oh, but we're not done yet. We're just getting started, because you can't have a Smash game without having a whole heck of a lot of modes. Let's start by showing off the main menu. I wanted to give it a back to basics look, while also having it play into the duos aspect because each section of the menu has its own pairing, where Smash and Online are kind of overlapping there and so on. Now let's go one by one to each of these different sections, starting with the standard local multiplayer smash. I've simplified all of Ultimate's game modes into just four. First we have Duo Duel, which is just 2v2 with team moves on and all of that. And then you have Standard Smash, which is just the normal free-for-all. Then we have our first new mode, which is Draft Duel. Basically you can pick any character for any stock. Kind of like Squad Strike, but you're not as limited as Squad Strike. And then there's Custom Smash, where you can change all of the settings to wherever you like. Next up, let's take a look at modes and more. Classic mode is fused with this new hybrid of classic and story mode called Duels of Duality, which we'll get into later. And then there's Stadium modes, which are like classic minigames. Some ideas I have for those is a Smashified version of Volleyball. I think that would fit the Duos theme very well. And then also bring back Break the Targets and Endless Finally, Stage Builder and Amiibo also make a return, although I think the Miis have seen their time. Now let's talk about Duels of Duality, which is basically classic mode with some story elements thrown in there. Every set of duo characters, as well as solo characters, will have their very own campaign, totaling to 35 unique playthroughs of this mode. The story mode will be presented in a visual novel kind of style, which will help cut down on the cost of making this, at the same time allowing you to have some basic story, some actual writing thrown in there. These tidbits of story will be thrown in in between each event, which will either be a fight or a minigame. I will now show an example of how this will play out, 
excluding the minigames. For our first event, we have a Yoshi Stampede, where uh, me and Luigi have to battle against six other Yoshis here. They are uh, set to level 3 CPU, so they're very similar to previous classic modes, where they give you what's called a horde battle, where you pretty much just, just absolutely decimate them all with like a smash attack, and then they all die in like one hit or something. Uh, you can't really do that in like basic making of, uh, I mean this is just on a normal smash mode with all the settings changed to look like this. So. Um, yeah. They still die really fast since the CPU is so low. There's like no DI or anything. And I did turn on friendly fire as you can see there to simulate the team moves. Cutting ahead we can, uh, we can see me and Luigi just epically decimate the final Yoshi. And, oh, nope, almost there. Still there, okay, finally. Event number two, the Mario Brothers run into the, the Wario Brothers? Is that how they're referred to? Wario and Waluigi, who is uh, being represented by me Brawler, because Waluigi is not in Ultima. And, uh, yeah, I think it'd be really cool to have some um, like a CPU partner in classic mode, because um, as you're gonna see in the later later uh, events, it gets pretty wild having uh, having your buddy clutch up for you. Okay, um, I mean yeah, it's just a basic beat down. I mean, you think friendly fire would get annoying? It really doesn't. Oh, the forward smash. Decimated. I, I really like that word. I don't know why. And yeah, there you go. I, Luigi had the clutch up for me. We gotta go rescue Peach from all of the all of the Koopas. First, we gotta deal with his his poor children, his poor neglected children. I have to defend the castle all on their lonesome. Um, they're also set to level three CPU, but. They're a little more difficult than Yoshi's, and I died really early, so it's all up to Luigi, who, um, I mean, it's just no problem for him. It's, it's Luigi, look at him. Like, he goes crazy. Oh, they don't, they don't stand a chance. He is on level 7, but, oh, oh no, is he, is he gonna be able to take him? Of course, of course, it's Luigi. Now we must board Bowser Jr.'s airship, which is for some reason floating in water instead of flying in the air. Um, he is with Larry because he couldn't fit in the previous battle. There's a maximum of eight fighters, but I honestly kind of like this. Larry's like some some henchman, evening the odds here. But yeah, it's basically a, a throwdown with Bowser Jr. here. Oh, he got saved by the water. Yeah, I, this, this is very awkward trying to commentate this, but I mean, <laughs> I guess it's better than just letting the. Oh my god, he just. Oh my god! Wow, that was fast. Well, now we move on to the grand finale here a 2v1. Um, as I was saying, I think this is better than just having the game play, play for itself, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe the uh, awkwardness adds entertainment here. Um, so far, it's going pretty good. Uh, solid 50% here. There's no way. There's no way we lose a 2v1, right? But he is set to level 9 CPU, so maybe Bowser will will turn the tide here. Um, uh, spoiler alert: he he does. <laughs> he gets this vital smash, and I do my best to run away. But the CPU knows knows no uh, no mercy, so we had to do a redo there. The final smash really screwed me over, but hey, it wouldn't be a fitting finale if there wasn't at least like some way to lose. Because of course there'd be different difficulties and stuff if this was like an actual classic mode, and maybe you'd fight against like Giga Bowser or something. It would be neat to have just like Bowser with different status effects, I guess, rather than just the same out. And yeah, he died much faster that time.
And that is a basic look on my take for a new classic mode slash story mode. We just had World of Light, so I don't think making all like these cinematics and stuff for this grand epic story is really necessary for the next Smash. But at least there's some sort of story there to help newcomers familiarize themselves with the worlds of the characters, as well as just, you know, having some good fan service and making it a little bit more than just set up fights back to back to back. Before we get into the online mode overhaul, including ranked mode, let's take a look at the vault. Also where all the collectibles are. As another effort to making this Smash game a return to form, I think it's about time to bring back trophies. Spirits were cool, but they were just images. Trophies were so much cooler to obtain. And I think it would be also a good way to introduce like an achievement system to where you have to do specific things to unlock a trophy. For instance, for this Kirby Sword trophy, you'd have to swallow and copy the link and then win the match. Everything else, such as music and records, is just the same as previous entries. That doesn't really change that much from Smash Game to Smash Game. So let's uh, finally come to our last mode that we are going to look at, and that is online. Mainly a new ranked system for the hardcore players. This image is meant to be like one of those infographics that pop up when the game's like, would you like to learn about the rank system? And then you click this little symbol and then get this little image that shows you like how much do you have to get for each rank and what you lose from what you gain. All that good stuff. As for the ranks themselves, we have Rookie, also known as Placement Matches, Bronze, Silver, Gold, and finally, Dastardly. Basically, you would start out as a Rookie, you play your first 10 matches, which would give you a guaranteed bonus, win or lose, to help you get through Bronze. And then Bronze is a no-loss rank, so that everybody can get through it as long as they put in the time, but it's also like a little bracket for low-level matchmaking, because that's something Smash Online desperately needs, because you either get someone who's playing for the first time, or you just get the same five people on Elite Smash. There's no in-between. There's not even really a skill-based matchmaking. It's just, like, it's practically just exactly the same as the number you have, plus or minus 100,000, which isn't always accurate. And then you move on to Silver, which has a little bit of a loss, but it's still fairly easy to get through, but it's a lot more of a grind. It might take a player, say, a month to get through, and then Gold is even more of a grind, but it's also, like, more of a loss, so that's, like, the, um, the lower high-level players. And then Dastardly would be this, like, high mark of achievement, and then it would just be even because the max amount of points you get is five, which I'll go into after um, I say this last thing. Uh, but uh, the amount you lose is also five, so you have to be going even to stay in Dastardly and to prove that you are in the top of the top marks. So basically, there's only two ways you can gain points. One is by having a stock at the end of the match, and for my ranked modes, I say two stocks. Mostly because if there's a 2v2 queue, then I think uh, three stocks for everybody is a little much. And maybe you could like do some balance changes around that to make two stocks more reasonable for people who are diehard three stocks. I don't know. But if you have two stocks in the match, you get plus two. If one stock, plus one. And then KOs are also points. So if you win, you're at least going to get plus three. But if you have two KOs and two stocks left at the end of the match, then you get a perfect bonus, which gives you a plus five. And even in duos, where you might have extra KOs, five is the cap. So you can only get plus five every win. And yeah, that's basically it. I'm no real expert when it comes to Pro Smash, but this will at least be <laughs> so much better than Quick Play and Elite Smash. And the best thing about it is you can turn it off. And there's also some like beginner-friendly options. It's not just you go in and you're just watching numbers go up and down 
for the remainder of your online experience. And with that, I think I'm going to end this video here. And I know there is, like, a good handful of things missing, and I didn't really fill in all of the gaps, but I think this gives a pretty good idea of what I would think that Super Smash Bros. Duo would look like. And it really does, like, liven this whole concept into something like an actual game. Thank you so much for watching this video, and please tell me your thoughts in the comments for what you thought about my ideas and what you think would have been better. I hope to see you in part 3, where I'll be going over some DLC additions to my roster. And yeah, please subscribe to keep up with the channel. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.